What's up, everybody, and welcome in to the Scarabs edition of the Team Check-In 2.0. Did we do one of these before? I don't even yeah. remember. Okay, nice. The second edition. Uh, and this one's going to be better, right, guys? Like, no way. Yeah. Really. Just like yeah, the Scarabs. Sure. Yeah, we got, we got everyone. Always like, saw you weren't here last time. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the new additions to the squad, uh, Stu and Scream. I guess it was, but it was just me and Brennan last time. Yeah, it's just us. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Stu. Uh, no problem. It's like the teacher, like, when the, he's just guy. Yeah, messing around. Yeah, I'll wait on you. immediately drops the gem. Couldn't, couldn't even hang on to it. Whenever you're ready. Uh, yeah, are you ready, Stu? We'll wait yeah, on you, I guess. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, I, I kind of want to start with the, with the new faces around because the team dynamic has obviously changed quite a bit this year with, the, with all the changes you guys have, uh, have gone through. Saad, I want to start with you. How do you think the team <laughs> dynamic has changed uh, throughout the course of this year? Yeah, it's definitely been through a lot of different team dynamics, of course. Um, I, I think it's a lot better now. I think we have like a really good environment. Um, I think we focus more on like growing together as a team. And I think we are more kind of connected uh, now that, you know, uh, Stuart like lives with uh, Slaney and I and Scream also is the same complex. So we, I think we hang out more and we're more kind of more closer, I'd say. Mm. Veronica, how about for you as someone, you know, I want to go through the people who have been right. here. Right. Um, yeah, basically what he said, I think a lot of, like it's weird too because you know, you had mean layers in, as rookies earlier in the year. So we were kind of just like soaking in info a lot. And now it feels like we're all just kind of cohesive, like under one, I don't know, like almost one brain instead of like, uh, just like maybe listening a ton to like Zap or something, mm -hmm. you know, so. Yeah, makes sense. Bobby, how, how do you think the team environment has changed over the course of the year? Um, not even, a shot at the kind of old team, but I feel like our maturity's just kind of already risen a lot. Yeah. Um, we can kind of look at stuff back, like a, more of a spectator view and just like see how the game went. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, not all the time will somebody be uh, as receiving, but it seems like people are willing to improve what people call them out on instead of say they will and then not do it. I feel like a lot of times before we used to say it and then there was really nothing that actually improved. And now if you say something, it feels like that's actually getting worked on. Mm. Uh, who do you guys think has made a bigger change to the team environment, Stu or <clears throat> Scream? Bobby? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like weird because like Zap was like most of the team at the beginning, like I was kind of just learning from him and that's like kind of what I learned a lot. And now Stu does nothing. <laughs> and then Lairs, Lairs used to do nothing and Scream Hunter now does everything. So kind of like just like completely flipped ADC completely and like shifted. in jungle. Uh, <laughs> So I don't even know. I'd say he's doing a lot more, he's doing a lot less. But it's like kind of even like how much it actually switched. It, it, like, it actually feels like it switched yeah. completely. Yeah. You guys, so, so, Veronica, you guys agree? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, basically, yeah. All right, yeah. fair enough. Uh, he brings the leadership that Layers didn't necessarily bring, and then, you know, we obviously Zap, 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 yeah, we lost Zap's <laughs> leadership. I mean, he is, he is a two-time, you know, he's, he's a two-time. Yeah, he's a two-time, what yeah. can you do? Stu, is this what you expected the SPL to, to be like overall? Uh, a lot more like uh, like talking and stuff that I thought I had to do, you know? That's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems like you're killing it in the talking game, right? Yeah. Uh, just based on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, man, you had Sino leading you all over the place over the last few years. I mean, you were under, you were under dictator rule uh, under Sino's thumb, right? Eh, pretty much, you know? I kind of did what I wanted to, though. You know, kinda, I don't know. There was like... There's like no problems because we just win every game. So like, I don't know. You didn't have to put as much going. like effort. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, overall, how do you think that you have meshed <clears throat> into into this team environment? Uh, you know, it's not like that different from like my old team with Sino because they're like pretty much the same in my opinion. Him and Nick are pretty much the same. Him and Yannick are pretty much the same. You know, they both I've suck. Had. You know, <laughs> and then how is Yannick catching a stray out here? <laughs> <laughs> Why are we not like? Okay. Well, we're okay. I'm here. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. Whatever. Listen. You're, you're okay. Ready for that. It's it's more meant to him, not Yannick. You know. Okay. All right. Sinjin's the boy. You know. Yeah. And then you can't compare me to Pagan. And Pagan. Pagan. You, Pagon, Pagon, you know. Yeah, that's yeah, that's I mean, the goat. Yeah. Right. But you're also a goat. But that's still you know that's Pagan. Yeah. All right. So it's just I respect it. One of the OGs. All right. Fair enough. Scream, I mean, you've been, uh, you're the veteran now among this squad, and you've been playing for a long time, and I think that, you know, no one would consider you a rookie, but I think that this is your first, I think that this is your first opportunity to have it be your team, you know, the way that you want to lead it and that kind of stuff, and, and hearing what Bobby and Veronica were just saying about how you kind of stepped up in that leadership role, 
Has that been a, a conscious effort for you, you think, this year? Yeah, I mean, I just think that um, they just haven't really, like, a lot of these pe players, like, no offense, guys, but, like, you haven't really had, like, super, like, great players to learn from besides Zap, I'd say, like, on former yeah, teams or whatever. Yeah, he was super great. <laughs> 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 like, like, well, obviously, they're just, like, really experienced no, players yeah. who, like, you know, they've, they've, like, you know, been at, like, the top of the game, you know what I'm saying, stuff like that. And I just think that they're, everybody here is really receptive to learning. And I think, like, I think that I've just kind of also matured a lot as well. So it's a lot easier for me to, like, just kind of, like, look at stuff objectively and help people improve. And I think that's something that I didn't really do well before. Um, so it, it's just kind of like, it's kind of a learning curve. But I think I've kind of, like, jumped into the role pretty well. Mm. Or, like, fit, fit, I guess. And I just kind of enjoy playing with these guys, honestly. Well, look, I mean, even though you're, you're trying to change in that way, you're still Lucas Bracklin at the end of the day. I mean, you're still yeah. building Mace Baca uh, in the SPL. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I got followers on the train now. I'm <laughs> telling you, I got a, a few people have hopped on the train. I've seen it. So, <laughs> Well, guys, I'm sure you all heard about Scream and, and what, he was, you know, what he was like as a teammate, how, how was it going to be the team with him. So, what did you expect when Scream came in, and, and how has it either met or changed those expectations? Uh, pretty much the same. Uh, same from Splice. Uh, just kind of like, I mean, Scream's really funny. He's probably like the second funniest person I know. And, um, well, who, you got to give a shout out to the first. <laughs> Who's the first? Bobby thinks uh, it's him. Well, Stu it's not Stu. I'm definitely funnier than Scream. Well, yeah. I How is Scream 2? I'm definitely number one, if anything. Well, He's just being a nice guy. I'd say first either myself or Bobby. I think I'm kind of funny, but I'd probably say He's Bobby's sometimes first. Funny. Probably say, He's sometimes going to be funny. I'd say Bobby's probably first. Bobby's then. first? Are you kidding it's me? It's obvious. Yeah. Although a good time, you're saying Bobby. Yeah. Dude, you say like three words during a Scream. How are you funny? Yeah, but those three words might be bad. No, it's honest. they're on my purple buff. <laughs> <laughs> All the times like, we watch movies and stuff and you're picking this guy. That's where we stand. Yeah, Friendship, I mean, friendship shouldn't really matter here, yeah, right? Just, so. This is objective. Oh, he, just, he makes a lot of jokes. Anyway. Okay. Some of them don't, some I, I know don't where we stand. Bit, I know where we stand. It's fine. Yeah. And, and so uh, I think me and Scream like, mesh pretty well together. I think we um, play the solo lane side better, or, like, better than most other junglers and solo laners. So I pretty much expected what, what has happened, pretty much. Veronica, you played with layers for so much of your career on, on console and, and then coming into the SPL. How different is, is Scream in the jungle? And did it take you a little bit to get used to, uh, I don't know if he's bossing you around a whole lot, but you know, maybe that uh, took some, some adjusting. Uh, I mean, it, it was definitely different because Layers, me and Layers kind of just both did our thing. Like, say like in a 2v2, for example, we kind of just were on the same page, but he kind of expresses what he wants to do a little bit more, I'd say. Uh, their play styles are very similar, I feel. So that wasn't that much of a, uh, a switch up. Yeah, Lairs is big on the Yotun's block. I love it. <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't be, you know? I think he is, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure he is. He just does it with a straight face. Yeah, no, no <laughs> smile at all. I'm actually, serious. I think he is. I'm pretty sure he is. <laughs> Pretty sure I'm the only one to defeat you on the Baka, by the way. No, I lost to the Valks yesterday. On it, so. <laughs> okay, not counting that set because we were just. Oh, so not set. counting the set that yeah, yeah, we lost. Counting. So yes, not, we not counting where that. I actually lost on it, but yeah. like in a ranked game where you beat me on it. Was that really a loss? Because that was just a, a team. Yeah, game. no, I think that was a loss. <laughs> <laughs> that right. might be more of a loss well, if you think about it. The one of two losses that you've ever received on the box. I mean, he's not wrong. He has a mean AK. Hey, that's how it is. Uh, scream, little, okay. little sneak peek of uh, okay. what I did, did to layers back in the day. Okay. All right, fair enough. Look, Scream, can you, I've, it has literally been, it's been racking my brain trying to think why Jotun's Baka is the play. I can explain it if you want. I would love nothing more than for you okay. to explain it. Okay, <laughs> you got to follow a train of thought here, okay? Okay, should okay. I take notes? Uh, you can if you want, but. Okay, I do. You can, there's also a VOD if you want to watch okay, it. Okay, great. Okay, so. <laughs> Stone cutting was the original Baca, like the plan I had for Baca, but that item, it's kind of gotten nerfed a lot. Mm -hmm. And like price reduction, that's fine, but the item itself doesn't really bring a lot of value when you finish it, I feel like, mm -hmm. compared to what it did. And if I just buy Jotun's, it has the same power, mm -hmm. it's the same price, it has 20% CDR, mm -hmm. it has 10 flat pin, and I think uh, stone cutting's like 21 or something. 150 mana? Yeah, it has mana on it too, that's literally useless, but anyways. Um, so the two is an OP ability on Baka, all right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's a really good ability since they buffed it. They buffed his ulti back to being good again, so it's like 1.5 second CC immunity or something. Um, so, and it's a really low CD base, I think it's like 75 scaling down or something, or maybe scaling down. Anyways, 
So the ultimate's really OP, and you just go blink, and you just blink ult people off cooldown, and they don't, if they don't have beads, they are going to take a lot of damage, and the minions fucking, they go ham skis with a lot of flat pins. So. Yeah, they freaking go ham. Yep. Yeah, we all, yeah. You were thinking the same thing. Yeah, I was thinking the exact ham. same thing. The minions hit hard. Right, but from where I'm coming from, mm -hmm. and Bobby, you can stop me if you've made yeah. this argument already. Uh, it's like Baka, like, attack speed is really mm. important because yeah. it's a duration-based true damage stim. Mm -hmm. So you just want to get as many attacks in as you can. Let me counterpoint this. Please do. So if you're fitting, if you're trying to fit it all into one cooldown, what if I just have two of the same cooldowns? Okay, how often are you casting Butcher Blades twice? Butcher season? Blades goes off cooldown right when you use it, and it lasts uh -huh. for like five seconds, and it's like a seven-second cooldown with cooldown. Mm. So, you know. I, I will say the one point about Jotun's on Baka, those minions actually do a lot of the damage when you drop your ult. Mm -hmm. Like if the mage can't kill or the ADC can't kill those minions, they actually do like 400 damage off your first ult. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not considering myself a believer yet. I'll get I build case. attack speed. I build Oboe, I build Crusher. Uh-huh. Um, and that's, I mean, I, get, I am like, yo Bobby, buy Shoguns and I'll handle the rest. He, he actually, he, he begged me to build Warfly. <laughs> he begged me. I was like, dude, if you get War Banner, Talisman of Energy and <laughs> Shoguns, I will carry the game. And that was it. Bobby, what is it like playing with Scream? You know, I will say, I was a little bit worried when we first like tried him out, because there was like stories that like, well, I don't know, stories, but I heard a lot that he was just like, uh, he didn't really take criticism well, he was like kind of hard-headed. And it, I don't know, he, he really takes like, if he makes a bad play, he'll be like, I just made the worst play humanly possible. Like, he dove a tier, tier one with a uh, Gilg and missed literally every ability and sought kind of like, uh, scream. And he's just like, yeah, I don't know, I just kind of missed everything. That might have been my fault. Sorry, guys. Kind of threw the game right there. But, I mean, it, it, he, he kind of changed what I thought was going to be, like, playing with him. So. All right, fair enough. How often do you guys get subjected or maybe treated to a scream theory crafting session um, where he's going to throw something, you know, Scream, what do you want to pick here? Mm -hmm. Jotun's Baka, you know, so, something along those lines. Saad, how often are you guys uh, subjected to that? Uh, I mean, relatively often. I mean, maybe like a few times a week. Uh, he kind of slings it out and scrims, you know, like, mm -hmm. or like in the car or something, you know. He's kind of like, like, I think the Baka thing, he said, Baka might actually be pretty good. Then I wasn't a believer, and so I saw it the first game. Then I'm like, okay, yeah, this might be pretty good. Yeah, so, I mean, it's relatively often. <laughs> Still bring it to the table, huh, Scream? I mean... A king never stops his rule, truly. So. <clears throat> Wise words. Yep. I waited you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Stu, you said him and Sino are similar, you think. Uh, in what way? In some ways. You know, I don't know. They just like their gameplay, like the gods they play. Like, I don't know. Yeah, that's pretty much, I don't know. Like, not what everyone else is playing. Yeah. Like, Sino has like the chalk, this guy's the Yodin's Baka. You know, it's just. They yeah. do kind of close I, their eyes and like pick a god and then just like <laughs> select their items. They're like, dude, I got something that might be kind of sick. <laughs> yeah, but Bobby and Solo do that a lot more than he does. Really? Yes. No. I've had Afro support in one of my scrims. <laughs> this guy. Guess who won? Yeah, these three <laughs> love. They did a, the no, team? We, well, I was actually like 4 0, like uh -huh. actually dominating. And then, and then I look over and scrims like 06. Uh -huh. So it's like 05. And we're like, we're never doing this Afro again. Like it was my <laughs> fault. <laughs> yeah. But hear me out. I actually think Afro's a better Fafnir. Okay. Let's just, yeah, just yeah, move on. Okay, that. no, no, please, no, I'm, please. I need, I need to hear it. Oh, please. So, <laughs> it's basically, their one is a stun. Mm -hmm. And her one is a stun and a buff. It's percent mm -hmm. power. Right. That's just Fafnir's two with a little bit of attack speed. Just a little bit. Yeah, it's like 20%. Yeah, just a And little. you can just build that in like a Shogun's. Uh, anyway, the three, it's a heal. It's better than like an escape because then you're playing selfishly to live right. uh, instead of getting in there and healing and trying to keep your team alive. And uh -huh. then her ult is just kind of better than Fafnir's. If you think about the peeling Fafnir has in his ult, it's two stuns that last like three seconds. It's really not that much. Afro, on the other hand, has almost three. What are you laughing about? Afro has almost three seconds of immunity that you can cast the entire time. I don't know if you guys know this, but like if you Aegis... You can't use abilities, you can't auto. Afro, oh, when that. she ults you, uh -huh. you can continue casting. Whoa. Mm. That's got to be good. The power of love. I'm pretty yeah. sure I've heard this explanation an extra time because he, he's explained this to me in the apartment. So mm. I had to hear this one more time than everyone. That's, I'm sorry. that's my fault. And I, I, you, I can, you just go like Shoguns, a little bit of like, uh, maybe like a War Flag, because I don't think War Flag's that bad anymore. She mm -hmm. has actually good 2v2. Um, 
Yeah, you kind of just run games. Yeah, that's what they do with. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what that's what it is. All right, so well, I was saying like we were just talking about screams theory crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, these, two, these two. If, are way if worse. you add these I'm two, right, well, okay. what's, what's okay. up then? So my theory crafting actually is pretty good. <laughs> right, I was, okay, in like July or like like you know the early months, I was like, guys, we should all build five benevolence. I, I'm serious. I was like, okay, this yeah. is just yeah. one hit. Okay, yeah. this is just one hit. Okay, choose the second one. The tier moon speed. High risk. That was last year. Two. Those are pretty big ones. From this year. I started to launch. Uh, didn't, didn't they like just buff him like three times? Yeah, around? I played him before he was buffed, and then he got buffed, and I played him even better. Yeah, that's true, actually. You know, I, I fought the chalk. Mm -hmm. I he, he built bluestone. What a Thorlock. Jotun's chalk. Mm -hmm. Got ganked like four times, kept dying. And I was like, dude, why are you building a power item first? <laughs> and he was like, I thought, I thought that yours hey, would be a six spike. Hey, 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 I tried it out. It, was, it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. He saw, didn't he solo <laughs> Harry when he was playing the chalk? I, I mean, did. that's not hard, I did. right? Harry kind of. Wow. Yeah, yeah but guy, hey, it's solo, it's solo. I mean, that guy isn't very good. I mean, he's playing King Arthur. I mean, I can all he can do, yeah. all he can do is solo the guy in front of him, guys. Yeah, yeah. Oh, exactly. I mean. But, like, I can solo that guy. That's how bad Harry is. All right, well, I mean, you're He got sold by Emil. <laughs> Twice, I think, right? I also, I also brought up the Bumbas, uh, Bumbas dagger on, uh, on mid laners. I was thinking okay, yeah. that before they buffed it. We kind of know. I haven't pulled it out, but. So it sounds like Sot might be the most successful theory crafter of the group. Yeah, I he agree. has what Slaney calls the shotgun method, where he just shoots mm. a lot of ideas out, and if some of them stick, some of them don't. Right. No, most of them don't. Well, yeah. no, but, but when they do, well, hey. but when they do, yeah, when they do, hard hitters. Do you guys think? It sounds to me, <laughs> between all the theory crafting that's going on, that you guys might. I'm not going to use the word waste. Uh, instead, I'm going to say you guys might. That might be a good word. <laughs> all right, we'll go with waste. Maybe some wasted scrims here and there, you know, where maybe I mean, we've, had few, these two. we've had a few sometimes. of those. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, I mean, yeah, sometimes I... It's not because of my theory crafting, let's get that straight. So you think it's the right side of the map that's preventing you guys from, from getting good practice sometimes? These two? Yeah. Oh, 100%. No way. These guys coin flip everything in scrims. Didn't you go like, didn't you and Zap one time go like 0-10 dueling and then F6? <laughs> like, four minutes in. I can't say no because it probably happened, but... <laughs> It, it hasn't happened. It hasn't since happened. Him. Yeah. So. You know. I mean, I did go like I'll plosh Vamp Shroud when they buffed it and like play a bunch of mages, but you know. He had to make sure. Yeah. I mean, those might have been a waste. But Guys, group stages are soon. We're getting our theory crafting out of the way. Simple okay. as that. Simple as that. Do you guys think that you're going to be meta setters come uh, come group stages? Is that the goal? We kind of like are no troll. We kind of do. Well, Bobby played some on us. Mm-hmm. Um, I was shifting it up in the this. jungle. You picked the Suki. Yeah, I started the Suki train, I thought. Curb this mid will be a thing. I'm sorry. Stop they it. don't believe me. That's just one theorcraft this year. He thinks Curb is good. <laughs> Blows my mind. Yeah. Just wait. No, am no, I, no, am no, I, no. You think Curb is good? No. Okay. Just wait. This is the one, you guys are the one team that has been the other, well, uh, no, I guess it's kind of the, no, actually, you guys are fitting the bill. Every hunter I <clears> talk to <throat> says Curb sucks. Every single one. <clears throat> Every non-hunter goes, that god's broken. No, I got his terrible. I got his terrible. No, her, she has the worst soul in the game. Yeah, they, they don't know what they're talking about, to be honest. Her ult's bad, her Snoopy's three's, her three's bad. Time will tell. That's, Everything that's, all okay. that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Everything is bad. The are Snoopy's the only guy that can make that god look good. I think she has one good ability, and then one decent ability, and then two pretty bad abilities. The god so. might be playable next patch, though. They kind of made yeah. I mean, they next literally buffed, good. like, two parts of every ability, and the path. Wait, they gave her, the passive. They gave her, like, four physical powers. And the passive, yeah, yeah. So, so you already, like I already considered that she was yeah. going to get buffed because everyone was saying she was bad, mm. too. He's <laughs> playing a long time. Yeah. He's yeah. yeah. playing Just, a long time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, right. play, I play Ganesh enough. He's going to get buffed eventually, and then I'm going to be like, I started playing Ganesh first. Actually, I did that with Geb. Remember, I played the SPL set against, uh, I don't remember who it was, but they played Serket, and I picked Geb, and we won. Mm -hmm. So I can say that I started the Geb, too. Yeah. Uh, you could say it. I'm going to say it. Okay. Yeah, that's Start the Geb. Yeah, we could. Yeah, yeah, we could just move on. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Rui. We can just move on. Yeah. Uh, overall, I mean, talking about heading into group stages, that kind of stuff. I mean, obviously, you guys have been playing better Smite, but it was a lot of talk coming into this phase about how you guys were going to be able to get up the standings a little bit, and, and that the results haven't been there despite the gameplay being better. How has that felt, uh, Bobby? We can start with you. Oh, if I was allowed to swear. Whew. <laughs> Absolutely and terrible. As a blanket statement, again, we're trying not to. You know, that's yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not going to. Just in case you had the question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that. Yeah, no. uh, it, it feels absolutely terrible. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, game one, we just, like, 
don't drink our coffee in the morning, we wake up and the brains are still asleep. Then we get to game two and we're like, guys, you know, we should start trying. Like, mm. let's start thinking. Mm. Like, maybe process the map and see what's happening around the map. And then we go back to game three and it's just like, I, I, don't, like, I don't even know how to describe it, but it is, we, it, it is embarrassing. Like, game one to game two to game three. We might very well just be unleashed on best of fives, though. <laughs> because... Mean. We kind of have a menacing game, too. Like, it's not It, close, it is definitely. Like. But it isn't... I don't want to take the wind out of your sails, Super Onic, yeah. But in a game... If you're, only, if you're guaranteed to lose game one in this scenario, mm -hmm. isn't it better to be a three-game set if you're guaranteed to win game two? Because what if game four is just like game one? And now you've got to win more games. Don't they you know? say game twos are the most important and best of fives? No, the most important is always... The, the game, game one three? is the least important. The second one, game one's think, the least. Right? It's like the second one. I'm pretty sure it's yeah. game three, right? Because game three, you it's either win the set or you take a 2-1. Well, they become two. more important as you go. Every, like... It, they they increase in importance. But you never you some some games don't get to game four, so game four is already right. But if some. but if they're going to be so played. it's got to be game three. By mm. the numbers, it's got to be game. I feel like I've heard game two before as well. It's definitely game two. It's yeah. definitely not game one. Yeah, we, we can we can throw a game one. That's why we don't like trying on the game yeah, one. Yeah, I think Mifflin uh, is a game one proponent. Kind no of wonder he loses so much. Uh, maybe I'm <laughs> misrepresenting his stance, and if I am, I don't really care that much. So I'm not even going to apologize. Yeah. Uh, Stu, your thoughts on, on what we were just talking about, about you know, how um, the state of the team right now with obviously playing better tonight overall, but not necessarily seeing the results in the standings? Um, you know, I don't really have a good answer for this. So I'm just going to say it feels OK. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't know. They, like, they, some of the games, like, we lose, it just f still feels like we're improving. So you know, yeah. it still feels good at the end, even though we're, I guess it doesn't feel like the best. Mm -hmm. But it still feels better than just losing and not like showing any improvement. Sure, Veronica, how about for you? Yeah, I mean it's kind of weird because like against the two, like technically worst teams, we've played worse against for some reason. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know why. So I guess we just play up to our opponents so far. But I mean, yeah, it feels good. Obviously, like I feel walking away at least taking three games or going three games. But at the same time, like what Bobby said, it's like. Bro, can we just like win one of these <laughs> finally? I'm pretty yeah, results driven. That's mm. kind of why. Yeah. Mm. Like, you I always like hate a losing. Like, I like seeing improvement, but yeah. I'd rather see a dub. Maybe In more one. than just game two. We got one. Got one. Because also, the public only <laughs> sees <laughs> that you lost. Did you know? we? Sure. Yes. We kind of robbed, standings, we kinda well. robbed it. But yeah, that was. Uh, 70 damage from Prudwin. You're that welcome. Is, that is crazy. <laughs> Definitely one of the crazier Fire Giants deals we've seen this year, for sure. Uh, Scream or Sot, any thoughts on, on the same topic? Uh, yeah, I just think uh, we put up some good games, and I think like it's like there, like you know, we've shown that we can take these teams and we can get some serious wins. And you know, it might not happen in a set yet, but in like certain games, we're looking good. Some games we're not. You know, I think that's pretty common among like you know some of the lower end teams. Like sometimes they look good, sometimes they don't. You know. I mean, I think this year a lot of the teams have kind of those <laughs> games where they look pretty bad. I think no team this year has looked pretty dominant over like a two month stretch. Mm -hmm. Dragons looked good for about a month and then kind of tumbled. Titans looked good this recent month, kind of tumbled. What mm -hmm. other team? Leviathans, phase two, looked good, kind of tumbled. Bolts didn't lose yeah. for like a couple of weeks. And it's kind of, uh, even the Kings, because yep. the Kings were coming in to this phase really dominant. But uh, yeah, it's just, a, I, I think the league is pretty competitive right now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sot? Yeah, uh, similar to Bobby, I'm kind of results driven. So especially after I give it my all, like in the Dragons game, like game three, um, and we lose, it always feels like extra bad for me, like just for, like a day or two. Um, but as long as we have like a steady improvement rate, like uh, over time, uh, and as long as we don't like peak like early in the season and then you know end up falling off, I think that is the most important because I do think we're doing a good job with practice and learning as a team. Well, other than so recently, well, the scrims recently. Last week, I don't know, been, uh, didn't three of our scrims get canceled? Yeah, we, yeah. 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 we kind of got like, wrecked last week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then we had a meme. So maybe like that's scrim. why the Valk set went, how it went. Was that the Afro support scrim? No, it's just like two months ago. Yeah. I haven't let me play it again. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, right. None of us know why, for the record. But yeah, I, I just think as long as we like, we, we all like want to win. I think that's like very important. And so it gives me um, like hope for the future. And it makes me feel better that like, you know, we're, we're steadily improving rather than like, not improving at all, or like we already peaked and we're going we're on a decline. So sure. Um, final question for you guys. I think it's a tough one, but uh, I like it. So unlucky for you. Um, and I'm starting with Stu because uh, he, he's going to be so locked in for this one. 
What would constitute a successful season for you guys? What finishing um. <laughs> near the world championship would you say, I'm okay with what we did? Yeah, based on the prize pool, you know, first, of course, <laughs> mm -hmm. and then second, and then the rest of them. Um, no got, so you got to make it to finals for yeah. you to feel like you, yeah. you accomplished it. Yeah. All right, Bobby? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, probably. Uh, probably top two. I just. I don't know. Like we have so many. Uh, I don't know. So many just good games where it just feels like we are such a good team that it, if we ended the year not top two, not making it to finals, it would definitely definitely sting a little bit. Sure. Veronica, how about for you? Yeah, the easy answer is winning worlds for me, but like realistically, I'd say we like, I think it's honestly realistic to say that we can win worlds because, like he said, like we've performed against every top team mm -hmm. at least a couple times throughout the year. So, I mean, worlds, anything is possible. So, we just got to show up, and I think I mean, winning it is the goal, honestly. I mean, SK and PK had pretty similar regular seasons no, yeah, for you guys yeah. the last comfy, few years. We're comfy right now. I would say. So right where you want them, yeah. if you ask me. Scream, what, what constitutes a successful season in your eyes? I mean, for me, it's just a win, you know. Uh, I've had three seasons where I just get first rounded by the same Neil Ma fraud <laughs> guy. I hate that guy. And it's just, I just want to win. All right, like, it just kind of sucks, so I'm just going to see what happens. Also, we're, I think we're a pretty good team at like adjusting, and that's a big thing like mm -hmm. at those types of competitions. So, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. So it's either winning or not losing to Neil. Those L losing to Neil has to be the worst thing ever okay. because you know <laughs> he's a fraud, but I, I just can't beat him. So is he really a fraud? I don't think so. Well, actually, I do, but you know, it's kind of like, you know. Some deep existential questions there. <laughs> yep. If Neil's not the fraud, then who is? That's, that's tough to figure that's out. True. Sot, what constitutes a successful season for you? Yeah, I mean, winning worlds, of course. Ultra, of course, but um, <laughs> I mean, can I mention, can I mention a, a, car, a car company? Sure. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, Tesla. No. <laughs> I just, I, I, pretty much the only materialistic thing I want is a Tesla, so I need to win worlds to get that Tesla, so, you know, I'm going to give it my all. And I, I do think we can absolutely win worlds 100% because we have, I think we have everything we need. Like we have good leadership out of Scream and Bobby. I think we have good mechanics. I think we have, uh, like we, we have a good environment and a good friendship um, together. And I think I think we can do it. Both Scream and Bobby, you guys were just dreading it instantly as soon as he brought up the car. Does he bring up the car? He, he loves it, dude. He loves Tesla. We spend yeah. probably more hours talking about Tesla, and, or not I mean, talking, just <laughs> listening to him talk about Tesla. I mean, it's fine. Like everybody, you know. They, passion. Everybody, yeah, everybody yeah. likes different things, you know, so fine. So. Of course. Like when you win the 1v3 and you like shove Mike into tower, you're like, man, that's a Tesla <laughs> play. Yeah, right yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. <laughs> Elon would have done that. Yep. Okay, all right. Look out for more Tesla plays from Sot throughout the course of the year. Fellas, thanks for taking the time to sit down. Uh, wish you some good luck. You're one of the most fun teams to watch the league, no doubt. Make sure you stay in tune. We'll be right back with more Media Day here with the Solar Scarabs. <laughs>